What's up folks, Zach here from PremiumBeat.com. In today's video, we are going to be cracking open Shutterstock Elements Spectrum Pack. Now the Spectrum Pack is an amazing little effects kit that I've had my eyeballs on for quite a while. And over the last few projects that I've worked on, I've tinkered and toyed and played around with this effect. And I can easily say, it is one of my favorite effects on my toolkit right now. So for those of you who want to test this out and create like a cool film, burny, grainy, flickery vibe, you can download Spectrum now and we can do this sort of thing play by play. So you've downloaded Spectrum. Let's go into our NLE, mine being Adobe Premiere, but you can do this in most other nonlinear editing softwares. <laughs> Okay, now before we hop into this, a beautiful thing about Spectrum is you do not need After Effects. You can do all of this in an NLE software. I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro, but you can do this probably in like Final Cut X and all of the other softwares out there. So take your footage and drag and drop it into your timeline. Now the footage that you capture, try and make it with the intention that you're going to put this effect in. I always think that like whatever I'm shooting, I always have the intention of what the effect is gonna be. Because if I go into it not knowing that I'm gonna be shooting this film grainy effect or something fast or something motiony, it won't take the effect to its fullest capability. Now that's not saying you could just put a random shot in and apply this, but if you have the intention of that effect layering in, be that lens flares, the spectrum pack, you name it, um, it's going to go much further because it'll blend really well together. So putting the shots that you think fit best into your timeline and now let's create this grungy gritty video effect. The second thing on the list is to take Spectrum and put it into your nonlinear editing software. Before I go into any project, I love to dissect and explore the coverage that I'll be working with that, and that includes effects. So I'd recommend going through the wide range of different little boxes and packages connected to Spectrum. There's a lot to look at, but I'd recommend just giving it a glance and glare because knowing what's available on your toolkit is incredibly important. You find stuff like this, other things that can create this sort of effect, and you're able to get this nice grungy gritty vibe the look. So good. Once you've landed on the look that you want to go for, I'm going to be using this one. Now take it and drag it over top of your shot. You're like, Zach, what's going on? There's the black behind it. Well, we're just gonna do blend mode. Go into your blend mode options in your effects panel. A drop down menu will come down and click on to screen. And this is going to now reveal the effect over top of the footage. Now you have two options here. Option A, you can leave it at 100% and keep that full blown vibe, which normally I do. I never usually change the opacity of this. But if you're like, Zach, this is too intense, you guys can go down and lower it down to whatever opacity percentage that you want. And if you want to get even a little bit more nitpicky, you can literally make uh, little keyframe markers by clicking the little stopwatch and playing through the footage and making it, let's say, 100% at some points down to like 35% at another point. And then you can sort of re-blend the blended shot. If that makes sense. So the footage is lock loaded and in your timeline, but you're but like, man, it just has this like harsh cutoff. It's not long enough. I don't like it. Don't worry. Here's some other stuff you can do. If the blend mode effect doesn't fully go throughout the footage, all you can all you have to do is you can either double it, which then just by holding the alt key and dragging it over, you're gonna be able to create duplicates and then fade it at a certain spot that works. So I'm gonna fade it here and then it can just continually play. But if you don't want it to look like it's looping, you have two other options from there. A, you could put that into reverse and then it's almost like it's going in and out of that flary effect, which works. Or you can then go back into your timeline drag and drop a new clip within it that kind of fits and fade in between the two. But if let's say just having the effect playing out throughout the whole shop isn't something that you want, you can also just fade out and just do that thing. That works. Now, one of the things that I like to do part of this effect just to really sell it and seal the deal is to add a film grain over it. So I have some film grains from Shutterstock as well that I'll provide a link to in the description below. And then I'll layer that in, lower the opacity to minus 35 and put it into uh, overlay mode. This is going to create this nice kind of grin grungy film effect. And you can kind of snap it all off and finalize it by adding a feathering to the edges, but you don't really have to do that. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually go into my footage and to get that real filmy look, I'll go in and even like transition myself out of a shot, what I'll do is I'll scale it in by about an extra 10% and then just play with the positioning points by clicking a keyframe marker mode and just like changing the positioning, going up and down, up and down, up and down for like a couple frames. And then I'll like copy and paste that over and over again so that I get this effect. So that is a base layer of what you can do with this effect. It's an absolute amazing tool in the toolkit for an editor. I love it because I don't have to exit my NLE. I can stay right inside Premiere, which is like, 
<sighs> my lazy soul is so happy of that capability. And if you guys like this effect and you want to like play around with it, there will be a link to the download in the description below. I'd highly recommend playing around with it if you're wanting to try out a new asset that is super durable and can give you a lot of cool and clean results at the very end. Dirty results. You can't get clean results. This is like the dirty, grungy, like, ugh, love it. Oh, and one last little sliver to throw into this whole mix. Um, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about this effect, I'm actually doing a part two of this movie, which will be talking about transitions that you can get and use by using Spectrum. So the base layer of adding like a cool film effect to your video is just like the first thing you can do, but actually one of my other probably more favorited things, favorited, that might, that's probably not a word. If you, you don't have to use this as an effective place throughout the whole video. You can just use this at the end and beginning of another clip to create cool transitions. So if you want to learn about transitions, this is now the inter international sort of sign language for editors, meaning transition. Or if you're a director, you're like, how do I say transition to the editor without saying it? That's it. New dance move as well. But anyway, um, transitions and all that fun stuff in another video. So that's all I got to say. Have a great day, guys.